Before you go to Hong Kong, you need to know about food. Hong Kong is a foodie city. Food runs this city. The food you'll find here, it's Cantonese food, Southern Chinese style food. Cantonese food, it's made for sharing. It comes in large portions for families to eat together. The quintessential meal in Hong Kong is dim sum. Dim sum was invented in Southern China, but I think really perfected here in Hong Kong. If you want to check out my favorite dim sum in Hong Kong, it's at Maxim's Palace in City Hall. It's right here. It's this big banquet style dim sum restaurant. What have I got here? I've got shumai shrimp dumplings pretty good and so what I like about this place they do cart service and the dim sum comes around on carts there's English on the carts and uh, you order something and then they stamp this card and that's how you pay at the end is by how many things they've stamped then they come in different sizes the different sizes equate to the different prices when you're ready you just call out and say um, that you want to bill and hold this up the tea uh, they give two pots here, these nice stainless steel pots. This one's got tea in it. Woo. And then this one just has hot water in it if you want to dilute the tea because it got too strong. I will say if you like soy sauce in dim sum restaurants, you need to ask for it in Hong Kong because it does not come on the table. This comes with the serving chopsticks as well. And um, Oh, I will point out that if you want to eat here, uh, they do this thing where there's a machine out front and you have to push it and say how many people are dining and then you get a number and then they call the numbers based upon how big your table is. So if you're coming here on a Saturday or Sunday, get here. We got here at 945 and we were seated at about 1040. So about an hour wait if you get here before 10. If you get here at 11, good luck. You'll probably be eating for dinner. Uh, weekdays are pretty good too. If you come around 10 a.m. on a weekday, probably no way you'll just walk right in. So you know what I love about dim sum is kind of like a movable feast and you really never know what you're gonna get because every time there's different things in the carts that come by they might come they might not come but what do we got here these are some egg yolk steamed buns these are some steamed custard buns there's custard inside these are some shrimp rolls these are some shrimp shumai I think I showed you those earlier these some of my favorite, one of my favorite dim sum items. And I judge dim sum restaurants by three items. Their shumai, their chashu bao, which is their steamed barbecue pork bun, and their hargao, which is a shrimp dumpling, which we don't have yet. I'm hoping it comes by. Mm. It's really good. It's moist, it's tender. A lot of times at dim sum, yeah, so that's the barbecue pork. This is just kind of a doughy thing. And a lot of times the dim sum, mm, you know, the dim sum will be like cold and hard. But what I love about this place is even though it comes around on carts, it's still fresh and hot and delicious. And, mmm, that's really flavorful. <clears throat> and what do you do if like across the room you see a cart that I see like over there? and it has my hargo on it. What do I do? Well, I just pick this up and I walk over there with my card. I get the hargo, they stamp it, and then I can come back to my table. So, you could do the same. Yay, my hargo is here now. That kind of rhymes, doesn't it? But hey, this is like the quintessential dim sum dish. And it helps to learn a few of these phrases if you come to dim sum, because actually the lady that was bringing this around, she was just walking around saying hargo, 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 hargo. She wasn't saying shrimp dumpling, shrimp dumpling, hargo. Then I say hargo, then I get, ooh some delicious hargo and you can tell it's still steaming like this is fresh out of the steamer delicious let's get a little bit of soy sauce on it mm. Mm. you know and it's like it's just a shrimp dumpling I'm really lame on my chopstick skills here this is pathetic but this is what's inside the dumpling you can see there's shrimp but there's some other like seasonings and spices and things like that Really delicious. Mm. Hot, fresh, flavorful. This hargau is the reason to come here by itself. And since I, hey, here's a doily. And since I lost the skin, well, oh, that goes down that way. Okay, so it's dessert time. We're gonna start with this one. This is the custard wrapped in a translucent skin of some sort. You can see in there, I'll drop it. There's some custard and the skin. Mm. This is kind of weird. I mean, the custard is good, but I 
don't know that I like the translucent skin. I think I like the custard when it has a little bit more dough by it. This is almost like eating custard by itself. So maybe I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, this is a, like a lava custard bun. This is kind of a new thing to dim sum restaurants. Um, and I first had this at Koi Palace in San Francisco. By the way, if you want to know what my favorite dim sum restaurant in the whole world is, it's Koi Palace in San Francisco. I think they have some of the best dim sum. Their environment is not as nice as this place, and it's not cart based. So I like that it's cart based here. This, that's the first place I had a lava bun. So we're gonna open this up. Come in here and take a look at this as we open this. So this custard, it's much more runny in consistency instead of being thick. So it's like a thin egg custard, and they call it lava because when it's really hot and steamy, it's been sitting here for about 10 minutes, it flows like lava. Mm. And this, it's really flavorful. It's salty and sweet kind of together. It's really pretty good. And in addition to the custard buns, the tea is really good too. It's a jasmine tea, so make sure you drink copious amounts of tea. <clears throat> and so some people, like the review maxims say, well, you know, none of the dim sum here is the best of any dim sum, but something that they do well, I'll call your attention over to that way, is the view. The view here is the best out there on Hong Kong Harbor, which you'll recall means fragrant harbor. When you go to pay in most sit-down restaurants, they'll bring you the bill. If you put in some money uh, and they bring you back the change, they'll generally hold it with the change there for you. You'll take the change you want and you leave whatever you want for the tip. So just know they're not gonna leave that change to sit there for you. They'll be holding until you take what you want and whatever you leave is theirs. A must drink in Hong Kong is Hong Kong milk tea. It's a specialty of Hong Kong and mm, Different than Thai's tea, it doesn't use condensed milk, it uses evaporated milk. And often on the menu, they'll call it stocking milk tea because they used to make it through stockings. If you want to uh, dine or drink at one of the original places for this Hong Kong milk tea, it's called Lan Fong Yuan. It is right under the central mid-levels escalator right by Graham Street and mm, it's pretty tasty. I will point out they don't have any English and they have two lines. The big long line, that's the seat inside. The short line on the left, just hop in that one if you want to take it to go. Go up, say you want a milk tea, 23 Hong Kong dollars. Mm. And while you're here, you can explore some of the produce and outdoor markets up in this neighborhood. For a quintessential Hong Kong dining experience from old, dine at some of the Dai Pai Dong. These are the street stalls, and they've been outlawed through actually most of Hong Kong, but you'll find them in a few neighborhoods around the central mid-levels escalator and also around the Temple Street night market. They often set up at nighttime, and you can dine just at one of these tables out on the street. One type of Hong Kong cuisine that's really popular is roast meats. You'll see little cafes and restaurants with roast meats all over the city. One of the most famous, it's more of a high-end restaurant than a little shop, is Young Key. They specialize in the roast goose. We have the two meat plate, roast goose and barbecue pork. One of the great things here, you can specify what kind of the goose you want. So actually, we got the part of the goose that has less bones, because one of the things I hate with goose or duck is a lot of bones. Mm. Mm. I have mm. a small little bone, but what do you do with the bones? Yeah, just put them on your saucer plate. They've got napkins. It's really quite tasty, quite flavorful. And this is the barbecue pork. Mmm. Has almost a like a honey flavor. But not really honey, but that's the flavor of the barbecue pork. And then here I've got a wonton noodle to go with it. Some soup, some little noodles, and some rice. If you want some quick and cheap Cantonese food, you can visit the canteen. It's like a Hong Kong style cafeteria. You can see there's a couple of chickens hanging there in the window. Typically how this works is you get like a roast meat and some rice, maybe a vegetable, maybe some soup. They'll be pretty cheap and quick. In addition to canteen, there's Cafe Coral and MX are some pretty solid options. Cheap, quick, 
Cantonese food. So for dessert in Hong Kong, you should get mangoes. As you can tell, this place I mean, has a lot of mango stuff behind me. This place is called Hui Lao Shan, but there's a number of different mango cafes in Hong Kong. Another one is called Honeymoon Dessert. Definitely stop by one of these places and get lots of mango stuff. What we have here, this is the, called the Mango Delight. It's got fresh mangoes, mango puree, coconut milk, and some purple rice. And then right next to it here, we have the mango pudding that either has some condensed or evaporated milk. I love mango pudding. And if you can't make it to one of these cafes, well, you can get this at almost any dim sum restaurant for dessert afterwards. Mm. And a good, see, this is a good mango pudding because it's not just pudding, but you can actually see there's like chunks of actual mango in the mango pudding. Mm, has a good mango flavor to it. And so if we come in here to this mango puree with the coconut, mm, this is cold, refreshing for a hot, humid day walking around Hong Kong. And then you get down here to this purple rice. Look at that purple rice right there. Purple, it's a good word to say. Mm. And it just adds a very interesting texture to the whole thing. The coconut milk gives a creamy taste to the mango. So definitely check out some mango desserts in Hong Kong. For another classic Hong Kong dessert. Mm, classic maybe isn't the right word. This is a fairly new Hong Kong dessert, but it's spreading like wildfire or like wild egg puffs. It's an egg puff. It's kind of like a waffle. Uh, we got this one from Mammy Pancake here on Temple Street Night Market. Also a Hong Kong milk tea. Mm. But this, there's, this is their most popular. It's the salted egg egg puff. So, mm, everybody hear that? And each one of these little puffs is filled with a little bit of salted egg. Mm. Mm. It's hot. It's fresh. Mm. And this one's not too sweet. If you like sweet, they've got other ones that have like banana and chocolate. This one's a little more savory, but a good snack in between meals. The 17th thing to know about food in Hong Kong is about Hong Kong cafes. Hong Kong cafes are not like cafes any place else in the world. They are definitely a restaurant variety onto their own. They sell almost everything under the roof from toast to instant noodles to barbecue meat to congee to curry steak to desserts to, to even this thing you're looking at here, which is a boiled egg in hot condensed milk. Wow. And if you want to know more about Hong Kong cafes, well, I've got a whole segment on it. It's number nine in my Hong Kong travel tips video. You can find the link in the upper right or in the description below to watch. We've got more videos. If you'd like to know more information about Hong Kong, you'll find links in the description or you can click one of these videos to watch more about Hong Kong. So I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video. See you.